Hi, happy day to you. Welcome to Uli Does Makeup. My name is Uli. Hi. Makeup, movies, and me time. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. Like, I even changed my decor for you guys. Have you ever done an escape room? I did once. It was a trashy one. It, the ticket was like 25 bucks. It was basically like a do-it-yourself escape room. This escape room is a pretty special one. I do not want to be locked up in this type of escape room. <laughs> This movie made such an impression on my soul that I wanted to share that with you. So this movie actually already starts pretty, pretty intense. Um, it starts with basically like a dude in action um, in this historical type of room with old furniture and the wall was actually moving towards him. It seemed like he was trying to find some type of coat right? And then he found it, but he was too freaking late because the wall was actually moving towards him and it was crashing everything in its way. And it seemed like the dude did not survive. <laughs> he did not survive. If movies start the way this movie starts, you absolutely have my attention. We're actually meeting the characters. So there's Zoe, she's basically a student, a really smart gal, if you ask me. And um, she's really shy, she's really nice, you know? She's really smart too, like she is a freaking brain on a stick. You know that every person has something that is not running well in their lives. Basically, Zoe has nightmares. It seems like she had some kind of traumatic experience that happened in her life. But we don't know that yet. But soon we will find out. Then we meet Jason. Jason? Jason. Jason! He is one piece of hot ass. Seriously, guys, he's like this alpha dude. He looking fine. He's also really success driven. He works in this fancy, fancy office. And basically career is really important to him. Like compared to Zoe and our next character that we're going to meet, Jason is like, yeah, he's high on the list somewhere. <laughs> now Ben, he's nothing like Jason, okay? Ben is actually working in a grocery store. He does not have this fancy money driven life. And he's pretty much messed up emotionally. They all received this fancy black box, right? Mm -hmm. I know, I know. It was a really well-crafted box. It looked like it was a puzzle. They received this box from a professor. I don't know the name of the professor, but basically there was like a special hidden message inside the box for each person. Kind of sketchy. I know. Now you're wondering, like, what the hell are those boxes, right? Like, what is it? Like, why are they receiving all these boxes? A ticket, like a one entree ticket to the most successful, intense escape rooms ever created. They all could win $10,000 of cash, which is a huge amount. Jason, Ben, and Zoe were kind of going to that specific place where the escape room was located. And then we meet other characters, for example, Amanda. Amanda. Amanda was a hot lady. She was a redhead. She was looking fine. <laughs> so after Amanda checked at the reception for the escape room, the dude that was at the reception actually said, thank you for your service. Which is weird, right? Like you're not, like why are you saying these things to someone who's just checking in? to do an escape room, right? Thank you for your service. What, dude, seriously, why? why? So when Amanda was actually going in the elevator, we meet character Danny. Now Danny is also like, he's like an IT nerdy guy. He already done like 92 escape rooms. So he basically knows the drill of this whole escape room. He's also like raving about this particular escape room. When all the guys kind of enter the room, um, they meet Mike. Now, Mike was actually the oldest of them all, and he was like a truck driver, and he needed the money badly. So he was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do an escape room. How hard can it be? Well, <laughs> if they only knew. So the whole group is basically just kind of chilling, you know? They're, they're chilling, they're just talking to each other, they're talking about, you know, how they got there, what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, right, Amanda spots this um, 
newspaper article. So the article was actually called Five Burned Alive. Holy shit. Indeed. I mean, she had a traumatic experience herself. She was a fire survivor. She had actually these kind of burns all the way on her back. Then Danny, basically the dude that already did 92 escape rooms, hopped in and he was saying like, oh, this is like such an amazing escape room. It's so well thought, blah, 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 blah. And Ben, the grocery dude was like, okay, you know what? I'm so fucking done talking. This is some type of bullshit, right? He was not having any of it. So he tries to walk out the door. He pulls on the doorknob and the doorknob just came off. What the hell is happening here? Like, how can we leave? And then Danny was actually saying, oh my God, maybe, maybe the escape room has already started. And he was right. When the doorknob came off, they actually found out that the door had like some kind of a, a combination lock. So to open up that door, they actually had to find a combination number. It was actually Zoe who found the combination number. When she entered the coat, the ceiling started to heat up. It was like turning all orangey and red and the heat was kind of like dripping down onto them. So they were starting to really get hot, you know, like it's getting hot in here. So they're starting to panic, right? Like I would too. They were really screaming for the lady, for the receptionist behind the matte glass. And that glass also had a lock. So they knew that they needed to find a key. So Ben took a fire extinguisher from a wall. That activated even more heat. I mean, talking about like being baked alive or something. Zoe actually found the key to open the lock of that glass matte door where the receptionist was sitting. What they find is basically just a freaking doll. A phone goes off, right? Ring, ring. So Jason picks up the phone and there is like a lady with an automatic voice that says, you must follow the rules. Of course, panic is everywhere. So Zoe was actually, hell no, I'm not staying here. I'm not being in this huge oven. And she actually starts to look for more clues. On the table were actually these buttons, hidden buttons. So when she pressed on one, the tunnel, basically the painting just like swung open and the tunnel opened up. All the six buttons needs, needed to be pressed in. Somebody needed to stay behind if they did not figure out how they could solve it. And then they saw like this water tank standing by the wall. So they were filling up the glasses with water to put on those buttons to make them actually go down. All the six buttons were pressed in and the tunnel door was able to stay open for all of them to escape. When Ben actually was the last person to go in the tunnel, the whole freaking room just went up in flames. They just ended up like in another cabin where there was also a lock on the door. So they were like, holy shit, like this is not over. We have to do it all over again. Like we have to open up this door again to go further. Like I don't want to do this game anymore. Well, this time it was actually Ben who found the code or like a nine letter word to open up that door. They end up like on a lake that was completely frozen. Basically, it looks like freaking Alaska out there. So they kind of transitioned from the oven into the freezer. The escape room was like freaking Hunger Games. And besides that, they also found this chest and they open up the chest and there's only like one coat, one warm coat in there. Zoe actually found that in that coat, there was like a hidden compass in here. So that compass took her to like this stuffed bear and she actually stuck her hand into the mouth of the bear and she took out what is actually a magnet. So Ben was actually taking a walk, trying to smoke a cigarette and all of a sudden his foot falls through the fishing hole and he said, the water is freaking freezing. I cannot feel my leg anymore. So the water was really, really cold. And all the people are actually gathering around. He was like, oh my God, are you okay? And they think immediately that maybe the key is actually in that fishing hole all the way down. And so Mike was climbing the trees and Mike actually found a fishing pole 
up there. So together with the fishing pole and the magnet that Zoe found, they were able to fish the iron ice block out of that fishing hole where a key was locked in the middle of the ice block. They could use uh, Ben's lighter to basically melt the ice. So Danny was actually going towards Ben and all of a sudden he just goes through the ice. Danny was just basically gone. He drowned in the cold water. Danny, the smart guy, the dude that did 92 escape rooms, what are they gonna do now? What would you do in these type of situations? The lighter that Danny had also went with him. So now they have to use the warmth of their hands to basically melt that ice and get that key out of that ice block. The temperature, may I mind you, drops all the damn time. So if they're not going to escape in time, they're going to basically freeze to death. So they found the key, they opened up the door, and they enter this 90s bar where everything is upside down, basically which is absolutely weird. There's like loud music playing, which is super annoying. Everybody's like, oh my God, make it stop. And of course they need to look for another clues. When Mike went on a walk in that special bar room, uh, one of the floors just kind of went down. And this is the moment that they found out, oh my God, we are in this huge freaking elevator. So Amanda, the girl from military, she actually started like behaving like a little Tarzan. So she went on her adventure in hope of, you know, finding some kind of clue or whatever. And she actually bumped into a safe and that safe had also a digit code. Now, what was hidden in that safe, you may ask? You'll find it out in just a few minutes. On the wall, there was like a giant sliding puzzle and it was actually Zoe that figured out how the puzzle was working. And so she put everything together and that resulted in them having a coat. Amanda was actually able to open up the safe and in the safe was a pool table ball. So to hand over that pool table ball, she needed to go from one space to another where there is no floor and literally like elevator drop down, like nothing else there. She was climbing and she was hanging by a thread. She threw the ball over to Jason or Zoe, I don't remember anymore. And she actually let herself fall into the depth of the elevator. So yeah, Jason caught the ball and he opened up the door. They thought, oh my God, we're finally going to escape. Well, no, surprise, they didn't. It seems that the room mimicked their hospital beds of their early traumatic experience of their lives. And here is where we learn that each of those people had like a developed trauma, you know, they experienced something really bad. So we learned that Zoe was in a plane crash and she was the only survivor. Amanda was actually fighting in Vietnam and this is how she actually got that uh, burn. We learned that Jason took a boat together with his buddy and the boat tipped over while it was really, really cold, was the only survivor, which was pretty traumatic for him. Ben, the grocery dude, got himself and few of his friends in a car accident where he was the only survivor. And then Mike, the older dude, he was actually working together in the mine with his brother. And we learned that his brother did not survive because the mine kind of caved and Mike was basically the only person that stayed alive. So what are all these people have in common? They are the only survivor. And so the game master knew actually every detail of that traumatic experience and they just basically redone the room. They started to basically look for another clue while Zoe was basically just trashing the cameras because she was like, well, if they cannot see us, they cannot predict what we're going to do and blah, blah, blah. In this scene, uh, Jason actually kills Mike, you know, the driver, the truck driver. He just basically, I can say like electrocuted him. 
If they were not going to crack the code on time, the room was basically going to be poisoned with gas. But Jason did crack the code and he, together with Ben, got out of the room. They were also trying to, you know, get Zoe out of the room, but she was just busy smashing those damn cameras and her lungs filled up with poison. She just basically dropped to the floor and Ben and Jason got out. So it looks like Zoe did not make it, right? Well, I have a surprise for you. So we have Ben the grocery dude, and we have Jason, the alpha man, that were the two people left in the next escape room. And it was just a really crazy escape room. Like it made them go really cuckoo, but also the like the, the, the poisoning gas that was in the previous room. And so they needed to find an antidote and there was only like one of them, one antidote. So they started fighting, blah, blah, blah. Jason did not make it. Ben actually found the antidote and he shot himself with that antidote. Is that a correct wording? I don't know. But basically he got himself the antidote and then all the hallucinations were done. You might think that Zoe died, right? As I said before, but she actually didn't. So she was able to snatch herself one of those breathing masks. So she was actually not affected by the poisonous gas. All of a sudden there was like a wall that is opening up and there's like two dudes that coming out of the wall. So Zoe actually smacked them on the head with something heavy and the dudes just drop. This moment we actually know that, oh my God, this looks like an experiment. So then Ben actually goes to the next escape room, which was basically the beginning of the movie with that crashing wall towards him. And it almost looks like he does not make it either, right? But he was able to escape, man. The shine is everything. He finally goes into this big hall where they're all monitors with their photos on them of like every contestant. Here he actually understands like, oh my God, what the fuck is this? Basically like a whole Hunger Games experience. So he finally meets the game master and they have a little like intense conversation. This escape room was created basically for rich men uh, because they were bored for some reason and say they wanted to gamble. It was more like a survival game for rich people just to entertain them, yeah. So Ben thinks now, oh my God, I won. I won $10,000. I am able to go home with all that money. But the game master had actually other plans for him. You know, he tries to kill him. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you, but he does. They start fighting, right? And then yay, Zoe to the rescue. So Zoe actually enters the room. She has a gun that she snatched from those two men that she actually beaten down. And she basically shoots the game master. Zoe and Ben were the only two people that were able to escape this horrifying escape room. And while Ben was in the hospital, uh, Zoe actually went to the police. She called the police. The police got to her and they said, okay, let's go to the location. Let's, let's look at the building and whatever. So when they entered the building, what do you think happened? Nothing. There was nothing there. There was nothing there whatsoever. Everything got cleaned out. It was just like a dump place, right? There was no signs of any escape room whatsoever. And this scene got me actually tripping because I was kind of losing my mind a little bit. And I was thinking like, wait, hold on. Did that really happen? Or was the whole thing just an illusion of, 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 Zoe, like maybe she's a little bit cuckoo, like who knows, right? So she was like so frustrated that the police is not going to do anything because there were, there was just basically nothing there, right? Like what are they supposed to do if there's nothing there? A little while later, when Ben actually um, gets out of the hospital, he is able to kind of like put his life back on track. Ben and Zoe meet up. They meet up at this cafe and it was actually Zoe that could not let go of this whole escape room, right? Because she knew like something is wrong here. Something is not right. And she actually convinced Ben to basically chase this case, right? Without the police knowing because she was really convinced that something's up. She actually tells Ben that she thinks that she found the location of the people that, you know, created this escape room. And she asks Ben if he wants to go together with her and just, you know, bust them. 
together with Ben, she is going on a plane to that location. Little did she know that she was going to have a big surprise that is going to be explained in the next movie. I know, I'm totally watching the second part if that comes out because this movie really made an impression on me. <laughs> it was really exciting. It was like a really active movie, so I liked it. Man, if I would have been in this escape room, I would be so freaking traumatized. I'm gonna finish this look off, guys, and I'm gonna come back. If you liked today's me time, give this video a thumbs up, and if you have a Gmail account, hit that subscribe button to not miss any future uploads. I will see you guys on the next one. Like, I'm not sure which movie you're going to take, but if you have suggestions, Leave them in the comments down below. I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.